Welcome to part three of our video tutorial on how to create a forward facing tree for train simulator using Blender and just three tools available. Okay, so here's our uh, default screen in Blender. Um, we get the standard cube. So this tutorial is not about teaching you how to use Blender, but hopefully I'm going to remember to tell you the key presses and what I'm doing as I'm going along. So even if you're very novice with Blender, you can follow this tutorial. I apologise right at the start for all the ums and the ahs and the mistakes, and I'll probably have to pause the video several times whilst I work out how to do something myself. Um, I'm a bit rusty in Blender, but hopefully you can follow what's going on. Okay, first thing to do, let's delete that cube. Right click the cube, press X on the keyboard, and then click delete. Um, the next thing to do is to add in a new plane, but I want to add this plane at a certain orientation. I want the back view, so control and one on the number pad will choose back view. Um, then click on the create um, tab here on the left and go plane. I want to align this to our view, the camera view I've just chosen. And let's uh, the radius is two um, uh, radius, that means it's four by four, because our radius is half of the diameter. So let's make this a bit bigger, because a tree that's only uh, four meters by four meters is not very big. So let's choose uh, five, we're gonna go for a 10 meter tree effectively. There we go. Okay, so that's our 10 by 10 box. Um, Let's align this box though to uh, the X axis, which is ground level basically. So if you know it's a 10 by 10 box, then if we increase the Z value by 5, which is half of 10, you can see that it jumps up to the baseline is um, uh, along the X axis. Um, okay. Um, Right, um, the first thing we need to do is probably name that appropriately. Now, Train Simulator needs specific naming formats for um, objects. First of all is the LOD, one, level of detail is what a LOD is, then an underscore, then the how far away this object will be viewable. I want it viewable from up to a thousand meters away, so if you're 1,010 meters away, this object will not be visible, but if I'm 999 meters away or less from my tree, then it will be visible. So we'll go one underscore 1,000. If I wanted it to be visible from 500 meters, you go 0,500, so it's always four um, digits. So one underscore one thousand then whatever name you want to call it so this will be ff tree forward facing tree okay so if we spin this tree around which i'm doing by holding around the middle mouse button okay that's our tree um and it's important that you've got the view like this so control and one back view should be with the green arrow pointing towards you okay because if you don't have that view, then I think when we go into black, when we export to train simulator, this won't work. Now, I could have this the wrong way around now. If I have, we'll just have to rotate our object um, after the export. Um, that's the luck of the draw. We'll see what happens when we do the export. Okay. If we want to add a texture to this object, we need to make a material, which is a, basically a material is just a series of properties for a texture. So here we have our materials uh, button here just click material and let's create a new one we've got none set up here's a list of materials already set up that's just the default one basically there's none set up so we're going to make a new material i always call my materials mat underscore whatever the material is so you can use a material on multiple objects we're going to have 10 objects in this maybe it was a complex model so that material is specific to certain properties like you want to have um certain um texture properties you'd use the same material in several places so i'm just going to call this matte tree the material for the actual tree itself okay i'm going to choose a few options to go here i'm not sure how much effect these have but we're making a plane so i'm going to choose the plane view here rather than the sphere view um i don't want it to be shaded so if i choose shadeless you can see how the shading is gone so that basically means it's uneliminated we're going to be doing some transparency so i'm going to enable transparency and i'm going to set the alpha value to zero okay um now we're going to assign a texture so I click the texture tab 
Now to make a sign of texture you actually need two slots. The first texture slot will actually be the shader. This is the train simulator shader. A shader is simply the renderer, the thing that works out how to make it display on screen. So the shader will be in the first slot and the second slot will be the actual texture. Different shaders need different configuration but this is a fairly simple shader. So let's make a new texture and we need to choose um, a type of none because this is just a shader reference. Now the manual that comes with the uh, TS20XX uh, exporter has got a list, list of all the shaders available. So here is the extracted contents of our um, Blender zip file and here's the manual that we've got open. And if you look around that manual you'll find um, here, just up here, a list of all the shaders. Um, if we just increase the view, the size a little bit there. So, um, uh, see if I can find, that's like Train Upright View Facing Floor FX. That's the name of the shader we need to use, okay, for a forward facing tree. Um, Interesting, actually, this manual also has, um, so if you're getting stuck watching these videos, it has a tutorial on creating a forward-facing tree, which is actually partly why I'm doing the video one. The written tutorial, it, it is very good, uh, but I thought a video one might help as well. And it's a great way to get started in making models is a forward-facing tree. They're relatively straightforward, uh, and if you do a good texture, you can actually create some really nice um, foliage to be used uh, a little bit further away from the track because forward facing items aren't great to be used quite right next to the track because um, they don't cast shadows basically. So we know what the shader is so I've got that shader name so let's paste that in here. So the second slot is the actual texture so again I'm going to click new image or movie and then we need to select our image. Now very, um, uh, oh hold on a second I need to save this so that I've got a default type. So let's click save as. I'm going to call it um, TSD tree. Okay, and I'm saving this in your developer folder. Um, often there's a lot of confusion about what a developer folder is and what a source folder is. It literally is just a folder on your hard drive within the Railworks um, folder. So we've got my Railworks folder here, source. If that doesn't exist, create the source folder. Here's source there. Then my developer is Nobkins, that's me. So any content I create will go in my Nobkins developer folder. Then we've got the product that I am making. This is a tree for TransPennine route. So my product is TransPennine. So I've got a, tran a folder called TransPennine. Then becomes um, uh, Train Simulator have defined some recommended folder names that you should use. You don't have to use them, it makes no difference, but it is a good idea to use the folder names as they suggest. So they say trees should go into scenery uh, and then you know roads or tracks should be in network I think or something like that, I'm not sure. But they're all documented on the train simulator wiki. Um, so I'm not going to cover those in detail here. So that's my folder structure and I made a new one called TSD tree. So let's save our folder, save our blender, um, our tree rather. Now I'm going to sorry, add that texture in again. So we're going to open our file. And because I've saved it, I can now go to default folder. So make a subfolder called textures and get hold of a texture, ideally a PNG um, format. Um, and it can be anything you like, just knock something up. You'll see in a second this is a very, very um, silly texture. Um, but uh, don't go to too much detail now when you're just learning. Um, you know, spend ages and ages on a texture and then fail to even get it in game. So there's my texture, and as you can see, it's a very, very amateurish attempt at a tree texture. Uh, so once you've got the basic thing working in game, you can retexture it, actually take a picture of a tree yourself, and then you'd alpha out all the background, just leaving the tree and the branches and the leaves, or go on the internet and find one, but obviously make sure you're allowed to use it, that the license agreement is under Creative Commons or something like that. Okay, so I'm going to enable the show alpha, so you can see I've alphaed out the outside here, and um, if we now enable textured mode, with a bit of luck, we might be able to get something to actually appear on our um, uh, object here. We need to um, um, also enable uh, the alpha option here and we also need to unwrap our plane. Unwrapping means literally mapping this object onto our texture. 
So let's make a new view. If you right click on the board here and go split area, and then we're going to change this view to UV image editor. In here, I can now load up my image. Look, there it is. And now, if we go into edit mode, so in this view, go tab, select everything, and then go U for unwrap, and choose the top option, unwrap. Okay, there we go. It's unwrapped our um, plane, and then can actually see the texture appearing on our model. Because we're in texture view. That's because we're in texture view. You can have solid view, just goes like that, but texture view actually shows the texture. So we've unwrapped it. It's only visible from one side, as you can see. Um, but hold on, I thought we've alphaed out these sections so they're not showing. So here's how we get that to show inside Blender. Just recap a few options that we've chosen. So to get this to work you need to have the material transparency enabled and the alpha I set it to zero. I use shadeless just because otherwise it, as you can see when you put shading on, if you haven't got a lamp object in the game, here's my lamp object, if I turn that off and turn off shading it's not going to work very well. So um, I just make my object shadeless. And in the texture view, make sure that you are um, enabled the alpha so that this texture applies, not only affects the color of our object, but also affects the alpha. But for this actually to render in game, we need to use a certain renderer. Now this is in the shading option, change this multi-texture option to GLSL. And there you go, we've now got our tree viewed in game. Uh, in game, in Blender even. Okay, so that's our forward-facing object generated. A um, couple of other things we're going to tell you to change now. Here, for our mapping of our texture, we have unwrapped it, but it's not using our coordinates. So let's make it use it to make sure it works. So we go UV and our UV map. That just double makes sure that this um, texture is using the UV map that we've created. So that's the first part of creating a forward-facing tree. We've got our forward-facing tree. We've assigned a new material, mapped tree, and that material has two texture slots. The first one is the shader, train upright view facing floor.fx, and then our actual texture file. But for a forward-facing tree to be selectable in game, for it actually to work, you have to create an additional box, a selection box. The selection box is invisible in game, you can't see it, but when you try and select the tree in game, what you're actually clicking on is a selection box. The reason why a forward facing item needs that is because the forward facing plane, this tree here that you can see, will constantly rotate so it always faces the camera. However, if, you, if it's constantly rotating it makes it very difficult select, to select, which is why you need to add a selection box. Without a selection box this is not going to work. So let's go back to, we're in object mode, so let's now add a cube. Okay, so there's our cube. It's a one meter by, one meter radius cube, so two by two. I'm happy with that. Let's give our cube a name. One, 1000 selection. Okay, and now let's make this cube the same height and width as our um, plane. I'm going to go to wireframe mode. And we're going to enable snapping, and I'm going to allow it to snap to vertexes. A vertex is a point. So I press A key, and then use box select to select the top of the box. Just pan it round to make sure that we are got the top there we have, and then control on one select our view. Then press G for grab, and Z to grab only on the Z axis. And it, by putting the mouse near these cursors, I can snap it to the same height as our tree, as our plane. Let's do the same with the edges, grab this time on the x-axis, snap, box, G for grab, X for x-axis, okay. So now you can see we've got a cube, but our cube is a little bit below. So here's the, the baseline of our tree is here and the cube's a little bit below. Now, I'm going to just turn off the visibility of our cube. Oh, hold on, I've just spotted I named this wrong. I named the actual, um, here, there's nothing wrong with naming like that, but it's this object here that has to be named. Uh, so I'll just correct that, copy that name across. So I'm just going to turn our cube off So and go back to texture mode. I'm going to give you a quick pointer here. You can see the bottom of our plane is exactly aligned with the x-axis. The problem with that is if we want to place this tree on sloping ground, then half of the tree will be above ground and half of it will be below ground and it won't look very good. 
But if we just extended the box, the bottom of our plane slightly below the x-axis, it would mean that the tree was half a little bit buried. But when you placed it on sloping ground, it wouldn't look daft. It wouldn't have half a tree trunk floating on the surface. So let's see if we can sort that out. So select our tree by right-clicking it. Tab to go into edit mode. A to deselect everything. B for box mode. Grab the bottom bit. And I'm just going to press G for grabbing. Z to lock it to the Z axis. I'm going to extend it by half a meter. So you can see uh, um, here at the bottom. Um, oh dear. That's not worth very well. If I just go minus 0 0.5 on the keyboard, on the number pad, that was extend by half a meter below ground. You can see that there. Let's turn on our cube again. And I want to go to wireframe mode. And I want to make the cube snap to the same point. So select the cube, select its point, grab on the z-axis. There we go. So now we've got a plane inside a cube. So the cube is our selection box and the plane is what's going to be rotating. Okay. So let's go back to our texture mode. And let's sort out this um, cube. Let's texture it up. So we need a new material. Uh, this material has going to use a different shader, so it has to be a new material. So make our new material. It's going to be called matte underscore invisible. There's going to be an invisible box. Let's assign a texture. The first um, one is going to be, remember, a non type. And this is just going to be invisible. That's the shader to make it invisible, called invisible, nice and straightforward. Then we need to add a texture. The invisible texture, it sounds that's going to be invisible, but you still have to assign a texture. So in our second slot, we can just assign one of our, our existing tree texture. That's not a problem. It's not going to be shown anyway. It doesn't matter. Let's change a few settings so that we can actually um, make this work a bit better. So let's first, again, turn on shadeless. Okay, let's make it a plane. Let's turn on transparency and set that to zero. And if we go into here, we can also make it so that alpha is used for transparency. Okay. Um, again, uh, it's looking not looking correct. That's because we haven't unwrapped it. So let's select everything, unwrap it. Okay. With a bit of luck. Did that work? Not sure. Getting confused. Let me just turn off that tree there. Something's not quite right, is it? Um, if I go, maybe change the text view again. Hmm. Not sure why that's not quite looking. It really doesn't matter because I say it's not going to be visible anyway. But something's obviously not quite worked properly there. If I just turn shadeless on and off again. No, it's not happy with that. Ah, it's that standard gotcha again, isn't it? I've selected it. I haven't here told it what mapping to use. Don't forget UV. Select our UV map. There we go. I say it doesn't really matter what it's going to be invisible anyway, but it's nice to actually have it working. Okay, so here's our two objects. So let's, um, that's our actual plane that will rotate, and this is our selection box that will actually be invisible. Um, let's save this, and that should be ready for export. Uh, probably it will go wrong on the export, but we'll just have to wait and see. Um, thanks very much for watching. Any problems that we do find during the export process, we will fix as we come across them.